In the words of James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, he's gonna take you back to the past. I won't spare you of the rest of the opening verse, but this is one I've often been asked to do, given the backbone of my former life on YouTube revolving around the Formula 1 games, and more specifically, the Codemasters series that has grown with YouTube's gaming rise in 2009. In that time, we've gone through seven different games as Formula 1 has become a perennial sports game franchise. But where do I rank their games? Which is the best in the series? Allow me to get all nostalgic as I review my top five Cody's F1 games. In hindsight, I should have probably made this list a top seven. But whatever, F5, it's F1 2011. It's kind of funny, I really loved this game when I first had it. But the longer I played it, the more I realized it was kind of broken. See, F1 2011 was a game that countered the relatively tricky F1 2010 by making the game ludicrously easy by giving cars way too much mechanical grip to the point where even average players could beat the odds, despite the game's AI being adjusted for performance, in midfield level machinery. Once you factor in the fact the game's presentation was actually downgraded from its predecessor, and the game still had very little to offer outside of its main pull factor in races, F1 2011 was a classic case of the disappointing sequel. At number 4, F1 2014, a game held back by circumstance. Naturally, people were hoping by now we were going to have a current gen F1 game. Then F1 2014 was announced for the previous gen of PS3 and 360. The hype died faster than a bunny on the motorway. And it's a shame because at least to me, F1 2014 really wasn't all that bad. Now, it has a bad look because its predecessor was really good, more on that later. But on its own merit, I kind of liked 2014. Cody's I felt did a really solid job with, with the cars in the new hybrid era, from engine sounds to fuel management and the subtle tweaks to courses like Bahrain. The game also still offered more than others on its list, with it being the last to offer a personal career mode, and a scenario mode that was still pretty solid. But at the time, repetitive server issues on multiplayer and a game that was gutted from the year before was never going to go over well. At number 3, F1 2010. Now to be real here, given this was Cody's first effort on the PS3 and 360, F1 2010 was really rather solid and a great base for, for the foundation to build on. A brilliant level of personality and presentation featuring an agent, driver interviews and your own motorhome to have a career around and still some of the best server quality for online play. Now sure, the game was broken with near equal car performance, making it too easy, and curbs were made out to be the devil incarnate, but for a first go, F1 2010 started a lot better than some other sporting franchises did. At number 2, F1 2012. 2012 marked the first step in Cody's trying to make their games better value for the £40 price tag, and F1 2012 was at the time, the most complete game in the series. And while the career mode took another step backwards sadly, the game did compensate for those who wanted a bit more on their money, adding a simplified season in Season Challenge, and Champions Mode, replicating real life and fantasy scenarios featuring the 2012 grid 6 World Champions, in a return of a scenario based mode from the early 20th century games. Also, the game was hard as hell, a complete reversal on the 2011 floors. Sure, the bonus modes didn't actually add much, but there was a definite step in the right direction for what came next. Which is my number one pick, F1 2013. This is the model Cody should have stuck to. It took them four goes on the bigger consoles, but this is still the quintessential F1 game to own if anyone wants to dip their toes in the series. Sure, career mode was pretty tame by now, but Champions mode became Scenario mode and got expanded from 7 races to 25, and of course, the classic content. Man, this was awesome. To have previous greats in the 80s and 90s be integrated into the game, with unique presentation aspects, older drivers from yesteryear, and some brilliant classic tracks like Brands Hatch, Estoril and Imola that could be driven in old and new cars, F1 2013 was the best value for money game in the series, and for me, the most complete, something so badly needed in sports games today. So, 
What do you think was your best Cody's game in the series? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. Thank you.